And yes, it works. So the title is uh, a synchronization viewpoint on some recent active matter results. And uh, so it's a selection uh, among some recent results we obtained uh, about the stability of simple flocking regimes. And I apologize to those of you who were uh, who listened to my talk at Kias this summer because it's a very large overlap with that. But in case you did not quite understand everything, you can you have a second chance. And this work has been done by uh, mostly uh, well, there's a lot. There's a first part of the talk which is sort of a summary update of what we know about simple active matter aligning particle models. Uh, but then the new-ish part is mostly done by Bruno Vantejou, who was a student with me and now is in Grenoble. And the other distinguished gentlemen below uh, participated to some extent. Okay. All right. And if you're curious about what's going on behind the letters here, uh, uh, you have to be patient and wait to the end of the talk if I reach that in time. Okay. So uh, it's about mostly the stability of long range orientational order in 2D active matter. Uh, as you should know, may know, uh, long range orientational order so uh, uh, is not possible in equilibrium 2D systems from the spontaneously broken continuous symmetry, uh, so-called Mermin-Wagner theorem. And a classic example given to illustrate this is the XY model where you have XY spin, so in, in some XY plane, <clears throat> also located uh, in a 2D space, interacting locally, trying to align against temperature. Okay. Uh, in the best case scenario, if the temperature is below the Kosalitz Fowler's uh, temperature, then you have quasi long range order, meaning correlations decay algebraically, but decay to zero and in asymptotically. So in a finite size system, you would have. Uh, some finite ordering, but if you increase system size, that finite global finite order decreases also algebraically with a small exponent typically in this quasi ordered phase. Now, in 95, 1995, uh, Tamas Vikshek and collaborators and Toner and John Toner, you're right, who uh, showed that in fact, in when the spins are forced to move uh, at say at constant speed, that's the Vikshek model. Um, when forced to move in a direction that is given by their magnetic uh, orientation, say even along the magnetic orientation, then you can have, and you do have, uh, true long range orientational order, meaning correlations do not decay to zero at infinity, but go to some constant, asymptotic constant in some ordered phase, okay? So in apparent contradiction with the Mermin-Wagner theorem, because many of the conditions required uh, are not met uh, to, to satisfy the Mermin Wagner theory are not met, you know, because of non-equilibrium ness of, of the system. So that in some sense, at least in my eyes, launch the, what is now called the field of uh, active matter or physics of active matter. And the first striking evidence that when you spend energy locally, so your non-equilibrium system, but you spend energy to produce uh, work, for example, locally at the level of in the bulk, so to speak, then you can have collective properties that are not observed at equilibrium, some of them very striking, some of them less striking, it depends on your background indeed. So today I will give you an update of what, how I see and what pe how people should see uh, the XY toner to the big check, sorry, toner to uh, systems. Uh, and, and try to present it from a synchronization point of view, just because of this audience and this conference. Okay. Uh, in some sense, if you think of, of the XY model in the quasi-ordered phase I just mentioned, the spins are more or less aligned. I mean, they, are, they have a finite degree of global order in a finite system, uh, which you can see if you forget about 2D space as all, this, all the phases of these spins, because they are in 2D, so they are like, a single phase can describe the position. All these phases are more or less synchronized in the presence of noise. Okay. Uh, if I move to the next slide. So the Vikshek model in 1995, uh, uh, well, to, again, these, these are typically in the original formulation, the point particle moving at constant speed 
in a 2D space. Uh, they don't have a physical polarity. The polarity is, is, is given by the velocity direction. Uh, and they, they align locally and ferromagnetically with neighbors within unit distance, for example. And that's in, that alignment is in competition with noise. Okay. In some sense, this is a flying, an XY model with flying spins and the spins moving in the direction of, uh, of, uh, of the magnetic, uh, in the directed magnetic direction. Okay. So collective motion uh, in this context can happen. This is ordering. All the spins are more or less aligned. Everybody moves in the same direction, arising from spontaneous symmetry breaking. Okay, so in 1995, uh, Vicek's paper, if you read it, um, does not even mention the nature of the order, whether it's true long range order or quasi long range order in the ordered phase, takes the ordered phase for granted, so to speak, and focuses on the transition, does some numerical work, uh, finite size scaling, and concludes to continuous transition. So basically, you go from the, let's see whether this works. Uh, you see the mouse here? No. So I'm not sure what I, this works. Oops. I'm not sure what I should do to point properly. On my screen, I see something, but not on your, not here. Uh, any help? Should it? Ah, yeah, you see it. Okay, you see the mouse. Okay, here. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, now it's on the screen, but not on my screen. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, so you, you see the mouse here. So at low noise, a uh, strong noise, sorry, low density, uh, the spins do not, uh, well, they align locally when they meet, the particles align locally when they meet another particle, but because these collisions or encounters are not frequent enough, correlations from, interaction to interactions are lost and no global order can emerge. Yes. You need this. <laughs> All right. Now at high density or weak enough noise, uh, the particles. Yes, yes, great. The top button, yeah, I guess. Yeah, great. So here at high density or weak noise, the Interactions are frequent enough so that global order can be established in space and time. And here is a picture where you sh you're able to see if you have a good eye, the little arrows uh, attached to the direction velocities of each particles and the global velocity is along this more or less this magenta big line here. Okay. <clears throat> so from a synchronization viewpoint, so this, these are modern, more modern results where the global order parameter, which is the average Velocity, if you want, of all the spins. Or each, each spin has velocity, say, one. Doesn't matter. And you just average over the whole population, these velocities. And that gives you, you normalize, of course. And, and that gives you a number between zero and one. So this is uh, this global order parameter for polar order. You see that it, magnetization, if you prefer. Uh, it's pretty high. It's order one. Uh, this is a log-log plot. Uh, and you see that it is decreasing, OK? but slower than a power law. And in fact, a good fit and also dictated by theory is that it goes like a power law to a, an asymptotic finite value pi infinity. So this is numerical evidence, re relatively easy to obtain. But now that in 95, sorry, this was more difficult, uh, numerical evidence that uh, there is true long range order in the Vicek model, okay? In the order, sorry in the ordered phase. Okay, so from a, from a synchronization viewpoint, uh, this means that indeed, even in an infinite system, in this 2D noisy system of identical particles, you can have true synchronization in, some, in, the, sense, in the sense that the phases are uh, not strictly locked onto each other because of the noise, but really uh, uh, do not explore uh, over a, over a unit circle, okay? So the Kuramoto order parameter, for those of you, it's the same thing as this, this, sorry, this pi here, I have trouble getting back. <laughs> okay, how does this work? The Kuramoto order parameter, which is the, the modulus, this pi here is the modulus of the Kuramoto parameter here, 
is finite asymptotically in 2D. Okay. Now, uh, what what Toner, sorry, Toner and two did also in same year actually uh, uh, after listening to a talk by Vikshek, they wrote down a so-called fluctuating hydrodynamic description of Vikshek particles. You know, you cause grain slow density field must be cons must be considered because it's a conserved field and you assume small variations in space and time of coarse grain velocity field and they wrote down uh, just by uh, symmetry uh, and conservation arguments a couple these two equations this is a conservation equation i'm not sure how to trigger this thing hello <laughs> all right i don't know let me go back. It's strange. Okay. Uh, this is a conservation of density. Okay. As you may know, uh, advected by velocity, of course. And this is something like a Navier Stokes equation with more nonlinear terms here allowed by symmetry. This is the usual Navier Stokes term, lambda one. Okay. But lambda one takes an arbitrary value. Uh, and that Navier Stokes, so there's uh, pressure terms, anisotropic pressure terms, and some diffusion, anisotropic diffusion terms. And here you see uh, a sort of Ginzburg Landau 5 4 potential, whatever you want to call it, half term here, which for alpha positive gives you a mean velocity V0 squared equals alpha over beta. Okay, so alpha controls the uh, transition in some sense, at least at, at this pair level without noise. This is an ad hoc noise term here. So, and, and then this compressible fluid has more terms than Navier-Stokes because of less symmetries. Uh, alignment does not conserve momentum, so you, you need to have this, okay. So what Toner and Two did, they wrote this down from because they are very well-educated people. And then they did an RG uh, renormalization group, so-called dynamical renormalization group, one loop kind of thing. Uh, study of the question was not about the transition for them, whether, but the question was whether indeed the ordered phase that you can simply find if you put all gradients to zero and the noise to zero, you have an ordered phase V equals uh, V squared equals alpha over beta, whether this is stable with respect to the fluctuations in the system. Okay, so RG allows you to do these things and the conclusion of that calculation, which turned out to be not quite correct at the time, is that yes, indeed, uh, call, uh, fluctuations in the system are not able to break the order and order is tru truly long range in 2D, even in 2D in this system, okay? Um, now, uh, I go further, yes, further. All right, uh, since then a lot of progress has been done and active matter has grown as a, bigger and bigger field, uh, attracting all kinds of people. This, from my viewpoint is that of statistical physics, but you know, there are people coming from other fields. And uh, basically the general, sorry, the general idea of, yeah, I don't know how to do this, okay. Of spending energy in the bulk, you can decline this in, at all kinds of scales and uh, Igor and other people, other speakers here before today have given nice, introductions to all kinds of things that things that move to get that that spend energy locally can can do together so so here you have a bunch of examples i don't want to spend time on this um now one way sorry i keep going in the wrong direction but one way a uh, symbolic way to represent this uh, growing field is that uh, okay you can have dimensions here on the cube of importance in various uh, theoretical works uh, you have whether the juice system is very dense, so we approach some of the glassy jamming cases, active glasses, whatever. Uh, whether the dominating align, uh, interactions between particles is alignment or repulsion. Uh, whether your system is dry, meaning uh, you can neglect the fluid surrounding the particles, which is something you cannot do if you have swimmers, say, in, in, in 3D fluid, of course. Uh, but your, your system can be more or less wet, so to speak. So these are important dimensions that do make a serious difference. And in this, in this cone, you might wonder where are Toner 2 and Vikshek? Well, they are sitting in this uh, corner. So it is a limit case of a limit case, if you want. But my viewpoint here is that if you want to understand what's going on inside the cube, in particular, whenever alignment is important, 
uh, you better understand uh, seriously what is going on in the corner first. So that that is uh, that is why it's still important to work on on this very seemingly very limited uh, range of problems. In fact, there are some experimental systems that are well described by big shack like models, but it's not the main important thing. Is that any system with significant alignment, you know. Uh, I think a prerequisite is to understand what's going on in the simplest possible cases. So, uh, in fact, since 95, uh, so in 95, this was presented, the, tr the transition was the focus, and the reference to the XY model was more or less explicit. And it was really uh, the viewpoint of a magnetic order disorder transition. Uh, since then, it took us a long time, in some sense, to, to discover that the best way to describe this transition, this order disorder transition is not uh, like a magnetic uh, direct transition like in the XY model, but it, more like a liquid gas phase separation. This was actually shown first by uh, Solon and Tyre for the so-called activizing model, which is even simpler by Vichek, but I don't have time to spend on this. Uh, and the physical mechanism behind this uh, liquid gas phase separation, which I will illustrate in a while, is the feedback between local density and order. If you are locally very dense for some fluctuating uh, fluctuations made you very dense, you get more aligned and you are as a more aligned packet of particles, you will recruit more, more particles. This positive feedback between density and order is key to generate uh, the instability that occurs uh, uh, and, and, and gives the phase separation. You'll see this in a minute. So in in, in technical words, this is, this is the same. This is, these are the Turner two equations written in a simpler form as derived from the Vicek model, but basically it doesn't matter. That's continuity also. This is a momentum field now, not, not velocity. And it's a compressible system. It is, and what, if you do the derivation properly, you will see that the linear term here in front of simply W uh, depends on local density not global density, local density. And this mechanism of local growth because you are locally dense uh, is inscribed in here at the continuous level. So this dependence is key to provoke the existence of actually a new phase in between, in between the gas at large noise, low density, and the ordered liquid uh, at low noise, high density, you have an intermediate coexistence phase. So what, what happens if you, if you pass the red line roughly is that, okay, you have what you would expect. You have the onset of order, but the, uh, like from, from this V minus V cube term, but this ordered solution is linearly unstable generically because of this row dependence of a linear coefficient, okay? So you have the onset of order, but that solution is linearly unstable for some time, all across more or less uh, in this region, okay? So that in fact, you do not have any stable homogeneous solution at onset. You have inhomogeneous solutions and typically made of uh, dense ordered patches moving because here everything is moving due to alignment, uh, moving in a gas, in a residual gas, okay? Uh, this is like phase separation, indeed, and it can be made more precise, but I have no time to show this to you. And this is the usual parabola, if you want. It could be continued to, to have a parabola here going down at higher density. But in fact, here, because the liquid do not, does not have the same symmetry as the gas, the liquid is ordered or quasi-ordered in the pneumatic cases, there is no critical point. The critical point, which would be the top of a parabola, is sent to infinity. And only in this limit, infinite density, where space does not matter anymore, you do have a continuous transition. So here you have a discontinuous transition at finite size. Actually, in the infinite size limit, the, the transition is continuous, but not critical. And I give you an example of what happens in the big check model, in fact, okay, right here. So you saw this already. So in fact, in between these two regimes, uh, you have something like this here. This is more or less the same size and uh, intermediate density. All the particles spontaneously have arranged themselves into a dense ordered moving band, leaving in front and behind a residual gas with a well-defined vapor density, in fact. In a large system, 
Uh, and let's see now whether I can do this here. In a large system, we have a movie. Yes, it works. Now you have, you don't see individual particles anymore. These are millions of particles and millions of time steps. After some time, you reach uh, basically a smectic arrangement of these bands. You see there are compression modes between them, etc. I, I, you know, something I did not say, but uh, there is absolutely no. Yes. There's a question in the chat. Wait for the mic. So, Hugh, what is color on this figure? Color is density. And the mean density must be one or two. I don't know. You know, so uh, the mean density is around here, you know, very dark. Probably above the gas, of course. Uh, maybe, maybe the mean density is two or four. I don't remember. Allow anyway. me to continue the interruption. Yeah. Why is it so one-dimensional? These where are these one-dimensional fronts coming so, from? So uh, it need not be one-dimensional. It is uh, given by the geometry of a box. If you have a circular dish with reflecting boundary conditions, this is too much frustration for these things to establish themselves, and you have a mess. So you, it, it's very difficult to see anything in such a geometry. If you have Rectangular boxes, uh, you, whether the walls are reflecting or, or not, by the way, this is periodic boundary conditions, but you can do it also with reflecting walls. You will see the bands sloshing from one end to the other, passing each other, and they typically follow uh, the easy directions of, given by the box. Uh, in fact, we know now that uh, equally likely, but you can engineer any solutions with a system of band uh, going this way, a system plus a, a few bands going that way, and maybe even a few bands going in some diagonal. This can be engineered. Uh, they do not appear spontaneously so often from, you know, disordered initial conditions. But if you know how to fabricate them, you can fabricate all kinds of superimposed smectic systems. In fact, okay, and, thank you. Yeah. So uh, now, from a synchronization viewpoint, uh, you have a fraction. A macroscopic fraction of particles or oscillators, if you want to call them this way, that are synchronized, coexisting with a macroscopic fraction of desynchronized the gas, the particles in the gas. So, you know, if I forget about space and I, I, I plot some uh, phase uh, distribution, you will see something that some people might want to call chimera. You know, it's a very loose sense, but again, you have a fraction of aligned particles, synchronized particles, and coexisting with a fraction of desynchronized particles. And this very, very generically, again, in the presence of noise, uh, but identical particles, okay? All right, next slide is, so the main purpose of this uh, talk after this brief introduction. So this general scenario of phase, coexist, phase separation and coexistence phase, happens whatever is the alignment with pneumatic alignment uh, in pneumatic systems. You have the same sort of phenomenology, whether you mix polar particles or apolar particles, uh, et cetera. This is very, very robust. So all these dry aligning uh, active matter systems uh, with no strong repulsion between particles uh, and no attraction are showing the same global phenomenology. Okay with some variations, of course, but the, this global picture holds. Now, my point today is a question that uh, many people uh, have asked themselves recently is whether uh, uh, these uh, synchronized uh, collective motion phase is, is uh, robust or, or fragile to other perturbations. And the short answer is uh, it's not very robust at all. And I will now focus on one case on which we worked recently. Um, okay, again, this collective motion, the ordered phase, the liquid phase with its true long range uh, ferromagnetic uh, order, uh, you can see this as a synchronized phase. So this is in the presence of noise in 2D with local interactions, but identical particles. So for those of you who know synchronization and Kuramoto type models, uh, well, you know that in 2D with the particles fixed in space in local interactions, it is impossible to synchronize. Well, at best, you have quasi long range order. If you have a, and then if you have, like in the Kuramoto model, a, a distribution of frequencies, then you have no synchronization at all in 2D. Okay. Now, if I look at the Vichak model in continuous time, uh, you can write it like this here these two equations. These the particles at position R move at speed V0 
uh, along a direction theta i. We are in 2D, theta i can be taken as a phase of some oscillator, but theta i itself has a, an intrinsic uh, frequency chirality here, which is zero in the Vickshack model, okay? This is a coupling to nearest neighbors, I mean, neighbors within distance one, and these neighbors come and go, of course, normalized by uh, some, and, and with some constant k, uh, and in the presence of rotational noise, okay? So Vickshack model, you take this omega i to zero, in continuous time and you have a big check model here, okay? And that thing in continuous time does the same things as I just showed you, which was actually discrete time version of big check, okay? Now the question is, in the big check case, omega i's are all zero. These are non-chiral particles that without noise alone, they go straight, you know, at constant speed, very boring. Now, if I have a distribution of omega i's here, intrinsic to each particle, a distribution of chiralities, this becomes very much like a Kuramoto model, okay? And the question is, can this chirality disorder, uh, can the long range order synchronized liquid toner two phase, can it resist any degree of chirality disorder? Okay, all right. So uh, I already said most of this. So now we look at uh, this case again, but now we've, uh, we're going to consider two cases, or maybe three cases, well, two cases, two free cases. We're going to look at distributions G of omega i's here uh, with a zero mean and some width, okay? And then we also look at the case where all the particles are still, uh, remain identical, but they all have an intrinsic frequency omega zero. And of course, you understand that you cannot just uh, move this omega zero to zero, with, uh, this means these, these are now chiral particles, each of them describes circles. Uh, and so it's not the same as going in straighter, straight with omega zero. Okay, so um, now with a Gaussian distribution of chiralities, so very similar to Kuramoto model, if you want. Uh, this is the finite size you obtain at, fin at fixed size, system size, at finite fixed system size, uh, uh, for a density one here, I think. You have two parameters. You have uh, the, the width of the Gaussian distribution, omega zero. Okay, that's the amount of chirality disorder you have introduced, and that's the noise, okay? And the density is fixed here at some value one, I think. Okay, now on the, on the y-axis, well, actually at infinity because this is a log scale, but basically on the y-axis, you have a phenomenology of a Vickshack model. This is a Vickshack model. You have the, at, at strong noise, you have disorder. Uh, at low noise, you have the ordered polar toner two liquid with long range order. And in between you have this band, this coexistence phase, okay? Um, now, if omega zero is large enough, these phases here break down. And what you see basically is polar vortices. And they are illustrated here. <clears throat> you see, uh, the coloring on this graph here is uh, the uh, orientation of it's a 2D, uh, two pi periodic color map. You see that some vortices go clockwise and some vortices go counterclockwise. So there is spontaneous segregation of chiralities. You have a dist Gaussian distribution with most of the particles near zero chirality. This spontaneously self segregates into uh, plus chirality and minus chirality vortices. This map here in blue and red, so blue is clockwise, say, or positive omegas, and red is negative omegas, omega i's. You see that the particles spontaneously organize themselves into uh, vortices of, uh, of well-defined positive, uh, well, well-defined chir global chirality, segregating the negative from the positive frequencies. So that's what happens if omega is large enough at finite size. So the question, the main question, at least for me, is, whether what happens uh, asymptotically in the, in the infinite size limit, okay? In the infinite size limit, uh, so I, I, sorry, I will go back. So what, what you're going to see now is that we sit, say, at some fixed noise value, let's say here, okay? And we look at the omega zero value at which you observe a breakdown of a liquid into the vortices. And you do this as a function of system size, okay? Uh, so what you see is something like this on this graph here. This is this omega zero star, marking the transition from 
the liquid to the vortices as a function of system size for various cases that uh, we will see maybe later. But anyway, uh, for the case of interest here, this is ferromagnetic and Gaussian distribution. This is a green symbols. Anyway, this goes down like some seemingly non-trivial power law, uh, but anyway, it goes down. So if you extrapolate this numerical results to infinity, the conclusion is uh, the region of where you can still observe the ordered synchronized polar liquid shrinks, 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 and shrinks to zero in the infinite size limit. So any amount of disorder breaks down the synchronization of the ordered phase into these vortices, okay? This is very robust. Um, now, if you do it, if you do the same thing in the band region, so you, you stay at this noise level here, say, you, you look at the transition level to, uh, to from big shake bands to uh, vortices, and then you see that this transition omega zero star or double star, whatever you want to call it, does not go to zero as you increase system size. So in, there is, even in the infinite size limit, uh, uh, a level of this chir chirality disorder for which uh, Vickshack bands actually still exist. And for this, uh, so the long range order observed in the band phase, in the coexistence phase, resist finite amounts of disorder, contrary to the liquid phase. Okay. Now, okay, we, we've seen this. Uh, we would like to have an understanding of this at some continuous level of some hydrodynamic theory or kinetic theory, but this is rather difficult to do with a Gaussian distribution. So we also looked at a bimodal distribution. So now you have uh, the, the chiralities take two values, plus or minus omega zero, okay? And the populations are equal weight, at least in this talk, between plus and minus. So you have half of the particles with plus omega zero and half of the particles with minus omega zero. Why do we do this? Because there we can easily derive hydrodynamic equations and theories for, for this case, okay? So the phase diagram in this case is pretty much the same, except that you have an extra phase appearing here, so-called polar rotating packets, which are illustrated here. So there is microphase separation into dense ordered packets. These packets are polarly ordered and they rotate more or less on location, but they are polarly ordered, whereas the Vortices are axisymmetric structures, okay? Uh, and they also segregate between, of course, uh, positive and negative uh, omega zero. So the pinkish packets are, say, plus omega zero particles, and the bluish packets are minus omega zero particles, spontaneously ordering, okay? So we derive a hydrodynamic theory for this case, in, and we start from two coupled Boltzmann equations describing the one body probabilities for the two populations, the plus omega zero population and the minus omega zero population. So this F plus say, is abducted by at speed V zero because all the particles are abducted at speed V zero. Okay, this is the rotation plus or minus omega zero D theta F uh, intrinsic chirality of each subpopulation, a self diffusion term. This is for those of you who can understand these things. I, I'm not gonna give the details at all. Self-diffusion represents uh, self uh, how the particles diffuse when they are not interacting, subjected to the noise. And this is a collision uh, integral here. If you want, this is some kind of master equation uh, where the collision integral here is factorized using so-called molecular chaos hypothesis into products of these uh, subdistributions. But anyway, so this is a collision term. So from, from that sort of Boltzmann equations, we can systematically, and we have practiced this in these systems for a long time now, uh, derive hydrodynamic equations. So you write uh, F, which is a, a one body probability distribution function in terms of Fourier series in the angular variable theta. So you, have, you now have F0, which is the density, F1, which is a polar field, F2, a pneumatic field, et cetera, to F infinity. Your Boltzmann equations are transformed into uh, an infinite hierarchy of PDEs governing the FK fields, okay? And uh, you now you have to truncate and close this infinite hierarchy using what we call the Ginzburg-Landau scaling ansatz, which 
should be very familiar to those of you who know what I mean by these terms, but basically some kind of a, a multi-scale expansion near the onset of order, assuming scaling powers of, of various terms. Okay, so I don't have time to, to do what you have to believe me that this is a very systematic procedure. Uh, uh, we make no particular choices. We stop at uh, the first non-trivial order, which is again, like, as usual, third order in our counting at least. And this gives you well-behaved hydrodynamic theories. And I can show it to you briefly. It's here. No, where is it? Oops. Ah, I have to go in the right direction, uh, which looks like this. So for you have, again, two densities, the plus and minus densities. This is the conservation equation for the plus density advected by P, which is the polar field of a positive uh, population. Uh, P itself evolves like a Turner 2 equation. If you look at it, this two first lines, it's more or less the same thing as the Turner 2 equations for Vicek, except that here you have the uh, frequency, intrinsic frequency of the population, of a positive population. And this is coupled by many terms, many of them are not very important, to the M field, which is the polarity field of a minus population, uh, and, uh, and also the density of a minus population. So anyway, when you, this is only one half of the equations. You have the same equations for rho minus and M. If you swap rho minus to rho plus to more rho minus, P to M plus omega zero to minus omega zero. Okay, so these are a set of four, simple PDEs, rather simple. These terms, don't be afraid by these, by these terms. Many of them can be actually suppressed, but they come out of our calculation. So um, if we look for homogeneous solutions of these uh, PDEs, we do find an ordered non-rotating homogeneous solution, and we can study its linear stability, and the linear stability uh, results are sketched here. Uh, in the colored region, the uh, this ordered uh, non-rotating solution exists, and the color which is not and indicates to you the that it is actually linearly unstable everywhere it exists. So there exists a homogeneous solution, the one that would well, that is given by the v minus v cubed simple argument, but that thing is linearly unstable everywhere. Okay, and if you look at the largest. Uh, or the minimum of the system size uh, beyond which uh, this linear instability happens because of the minimal uh, of the minimal uh, wave vector. You can see that as a function of omega zero, this goes down. So again, asymptotically, uh, indeed, it is linearly in unstable everywhere. So yes, five minutes. All right. And here are uh, now the phase diagram of the PDEs looks very much like the one of the uh, microscopic models, you have the vortices here and you have polar packets like this. Okay, so we have qualitative agreement at the level of this continuous theory in the deterministic case, at least. Uh, I can continue this, you've shown. Uh, what else? Yes. Now, I sh when the particles are the same, different case. So the summary so far is that any amount of disorder breaks down the, the synchronized phase, uh, and we can have some understanding at, at continuous level of this as a linear instability of, of, the, of a basic solution. If the particles are identical again, but now I have each, all of them have the same chirality, chirality say plus omega zero, so a single delta peak omega zero instead of uh, a peak at zero for Vicek model, uh, we can do very much the same thing. Um, the results are very similar to, to the previous case. The phase diagram, similar. You have uh, the Vicek phases break down to vortices and polar packets. Of course, the, the vortices and the polar packets have the same chirality as that of the particles. They don't self-segregate into plus and minus. We can derive hydrodynamic theory. We can uh, find a rotating ordered solution and do the Floquet analysis of this one, of this solution. And that Floquet analysis shows that it's always unstable also, linearly unstable. So there's linear instability of a basic ordered solution everywhere. Uh, and again, for the band phase, this is not true. For the band phase, there is this a finite amount of, of uh, chirality, okay? Uh, and I think I'm done. Polar flux, Vicek bands, uh, 
some kind, you can view this as, a, as some kind of synchronization. Uh, if you introduce some frequency or chirality disorder, basically the ordered homogeneous phase breaks down totally, but the band phase, the coexistence phase resists to some extent, okay? Uh, and this is also true at, at uh, continuous hydrodynamic level or kinetic level. And these are nice little movies of many vortices, coexistence of vortices and bands. And I had a last slide to explain maybe the, yeah. So in a wider context, and I could go on like this for two hours, <laughs> I could show you that the toner two ordered phase is also fragile to uh, spatial and isotropy. So this is, for example, if you think of synchronization, if the oscillators are not quite phase invariant along the circle, that you have some preferred directions, any amount of this breaks down also the toner two uh, picture. Uh, Quench disorder in space, in 2D space, breaks also. Any amount of it breaks this, uh, this phase. In the introduction of a spontaneous little, a spontaneous obstacle, you see here, this is the obstacle in a bigish system. Mm -hmm. And we are in the Toner 2 phase. And this obstacle, who stubbornly stays there, is as generated countergoing waves that broke down the Porter 2 liquid. Mm -hmm. And this thing never recovers because it keeps generating others and others and others. So, but asymptotically, you take this finite obstacle in an infinite system mm -hmm. or an infinite, you go to finite system of increasing size, you will break down order completely. So there's no asymptotic order there. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm really done this time. Okay, thank you for this fantastic uh, lecture. Uh, there is still time for questions. Yes, Rio, please. Microphone, please. In the front. So um, how much of these can be understood like in a similar way to Imri and Ma argument? Like is- well, That's a quench disorder. You, you're speaking of a quench disorder thing, but uh, the karate disorder, I don't think there is an Imrima type of argument for this, or, or maybe there would be. In the quench disorder case, you can, you can invoke also Imrima type of arguments. Although, Because I, I would have thought that the omega i are the torques. So if I replace those velocity fields as like a magnet, then yeah. I, I, thought, I would have thought that that's kind of similar to the um, Imri and Ma. If you fix the particle in space, yes. But right. It, because they move according to this chirality, so to speak. Uh, I don't think it carries over so easy, so trivially. You may well be right, yeah, actually. Is, but, yeah, uh, I agree that it's not yeah. trivial, but I, I was wondering if the... Um, so in the Imri Ma argument, I think you can understand it, stand it in terms of like the Golsomos being coupled because of the yeah. disorder. So I was wondering if that kind of our, um, picture holds in this case. Well, the linear instability that we see from the hydrodynamic theory uh, is, is at finite. I mean, it has a finite, it, it starts at, at wave numbers zero, but then it has a finite oh, maximal wave number. Oh, so so I'm not sure you can reconcile the right, picture. Okay. Yeah, that, that's fair. Yeah, okay, there's you. another question by you. Uh, 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 John Toner just published a paper about incompressible portal axial fluids with quenched disorder. And they claim that it's at least in dimension more than two. This uh, state is stable against random yeah. quench disorder. Does it uh, reconcile with your finding? Yeah, so microphone. You know, infinite amount of combinations of incompressibility, maltusionness, quench disorder, etc. Okay. So in the new episode of this Toner ser saga series, yes, uh, what I can tell you is that without incompressibility, you can find types of quench disorder, which are weaker than say random field type of disorders that preserve long range order. But this long range order is not the toner two fixed point. So already without incompressibility, you can have long range order in the presence of quench disorder, but that quench disorder is say random couplings, random potential type of disorder. Uh, with incompressibility, well, you know, these systems are already very hard to study seriously, I would say, numerically or serious RG. Uh, 
if you add incompressibility, it could help a little bit VRG, but numerically it's not going to help. But nobody has looked at this, of course. You know, so it could be that the incompressible, non-trivial fixed point, um, well, the, the stability of a of, of a of this long range order is I mean, this fixed point remains the same under the presence of quench disorder and. Of course, we have to know which type of quench disorder they are talking about. Uh, certainly, the RG approach cannot tackle seriously the first question that any statistical physicist should ask him herself about quench disorder, whether sample to sample fluctuations asymptotically dominate the system or not. You know? So, what they do cannot give them this, the answer. Whereas, I see this as the first question you should ask yourself. So, you know, we can discuss later. I can't okay, hear you. Okay, more questions, please. Yeah. Yes, there's one in the middle. Okay, thank you for the uh, interesting talk. So, so you mentioned uh, this uh, separation between like particles of different chiralities and could you please comment on like the, like their coarsening behavior maybe? Yeah. Uh, well, we haven't looked at this. <laughs> you know, indeed, uh, this, these, all the, all the new phases, these, I mean, basically two phases only, these, mm -hmm. these vortices and the polar packets, these are micro phases. Oh, okay. uh, so you, in fact, uh, I put a few things under the rug. If, if you, if you, they resist a very, very high density. So it's very hard to see. But it is microphase oh. because there is no repulsion in the, at all in this in this oh. limit. Uh, mm -hmm. If we put a minimal amount or very very small amount of repulsion, it's very clearly microphase separated. If you oh. don't do this, you can keep feeding vortices and polar packets to very very dense structures. I and mean, so, in fact, in this limit, in this pure Vicek limit, without any repulsion, mm -hmm. it is very hard to see. Uh, microphase, the microphase nature of, of the space separated state. It's clear that the gas level is well defined and all that, but mm -hmm. it's not clear that you have, you can have a single vortex or single polar packets or many mm -hmm. different ones. Okay. So the coarsening, we didn't do any systematic study of coarsening. I have a few movies I could show you, but mm -hmm. uh, very quick, what you see very fast is many small vortices mm -hmm. and then they coarsen. Mm -hmm. They coarsen very, very, very slowly because they have to diffuse in space to meet and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, our conclusion from this, extrapolating this very, very slow coarsening, is that they will coarsen not to one single or two or two vortices with opposite chiralities, but to a number of them. But numerically, almost impossible. So, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, in the hydro level, uh, we can see more clearly, understand more clearly why it is microphase separated. But, uh, okay. Thank you. Okay, I think we should move on. Let's uh, thank you for this fantastic lecture. Thank you very much.